happy. Hi, ma'am. I'm good. How are you? Good. Did you do all your PMP prep? You passed the PMP, right? No. Yeah, I passed it with very good marks. Then why are you here? Scores and all. <laughs> I want the refresher and like your sessions. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the course. I think I was talking to somebody else as well. That why are you in the class? And a lot of people logged out from the class, and I am sure some of them would be from you know people like you from the other participants, other batches. So and suddenly I see ten people, and then I saw only four people in the meeting. So I am sure people are from the other batches. <laughs> So, Padmapi, do you want to talk about how did you pass the, you know, your PMP session for these people? Yeah, sure. I mean, you want me to say now, or uh, let's let me take a poll from these people. Do you want to hear her success story, or do you want to talk about start off with the theory first? What do you guys say? Just type on the chat yeah. so I can speak. Success story. If success story, do a thumbs up. You can do a thumbs up. Using the mocha ends here, there are there is a hand gesture. Okay, yeah, yeah. People want to hear your success story. Okay, two. Let's start from you, Panavi. I'm sorry, I just pounced on you. If you don't want to, you're not ready. I can start off with the session. Don't worry no on that. No problem. I can just uh, like a uh, high level. I can. Uh... Uh, like tell my story so uh, last year i think around this time only we had a session right ma'am in august we started right so yeah. yeah so it was uh so the basic thing that i have understood from the sessions is we have to be very clear on the concepts like if we understand each and every concept that uh, ma'am uh, like you know discusses so it's actually a concept game and each and every question is scenario based so the way ma'am teaches us then we have to do whatever he she gives the questions and everything all those things and all the videos diligently if we do everything and then was like do for the mock go for the mock questions uh, mock exams of 4 hours everything if we do and uh, you know uh, the best thing about ma'am i would say is she makes the concept so easy for us to understand like it's so like we can relate to those that uh, even now those those are ingrained in my mind that i know what is what and because because of the way ma'am teaches so if everyone like each one of you do uh, like whatever she says just do in that way and plan in that way then it will be very easy pmp is not that tough i am saying it it is tough because it's the syllabus is huge and you know there are a lot of uh, four hours uh, exam it has been ages like uh, we, i am in 12 uh, years experience person it has been ages that i have given some exam that to four hours it's very straining uh, emotionally physically so it takes we lost you there but but maybe. i think yeah. with any other institution i wouldn't have just lost you for the last one 30 seconds or so you there yeah i'm there yeah, is yeah. it audible yeah now no yeah i think some network glitch yeah so uh, i was saying that if we like uh, you know whatever we it's very strenuous and difficult exam no doubt but the way uh, gavita ma'am teaches it's like every concept is uh, still i'm like concepts are very clear and that is what the exam pattern now is because i have whatever question i got each and everything was scenario based i did not get a single uh, calculation based question no definition nothing every thing was uh, scenario based so if we you know know the concepts very well and we give every day you know 2 hours or 1 hour of time then it's like it will be easy i think ma'am makes it easy otherwise it's difficult exam i think so yeah and uh, i took around uh, after our sessions i took around 2 2 2 to 1 1/2 months to uh, do it but in between i had some personal commitment so i could not do so uh, i gave it one more month and then i did it so yeah and uh, that's what it is about <laughs> questions people thank you panabi for saying so, good words about me yeah 
<laughs> ma'am you made it possible otherwise it wouldn't have it's really it's really difficult <laughs> thank you thank you so let's get started people who, who have joined uh, us for the first time um, i have if you look at in the chat window there was one session which i did earlier last last monday um i have given a youtube link of that particular session so if you go to youtube you're going to find a playlist called free sessions and i'll keep on adding these sessions out there this session is also getting recorded um so the first session can be found out there i've given you the link just subscribe to that channel so that you guys can um, get the link if in case you miss out on the you know any day any event so uh today we're going to be talking about the agile uh, aspect so last time we talked about basics of project management we discussed efopa uh, you know how does the project run in the organization and things like that today i would want to um, you know just uh, bring your mind because we've been doing predictive way of working how many of you uh, are from the agile background if you can do a thumbs up or just type a yes or agile uh, it will just give me a sense of how many people have are been you know knows the subject are you guys there okay some of so i see one yes if other people don't know just type no um so that i get that sense of you know um how depth how deep i need to go in that subject okay okay great so um the way i'm going to talk about it's uh, um, the reference for the discussion is this book called pmp study guide in case you don't have it just go ahead and buy this book so that you can do or you can practice the questions um i'm going to pick up the uh, you know context from here so that you have something to go back and read read and recall things um so there was a point of time in 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 case of if you look at agile uh, let me type so there there are normal brick and mortar sort of project let's say if you are making a building in this building uh, there is a pm who wears this hat of project management and there are other people who does the job of construction this these are the team member for this project manager so this project manager in normal scenario is very powerful he plans he or she plans execute monitor and control a lot of work and a lot of authority with the project manager but uh, in case of agile uh, what happened when when the software uh, people came in the websites were made by the software guys who knew how to work with software applications were made by software people so there are uh, yes and you yeah we are not able to see this drawings oh apologies um is the yeah. same issue i think uh, the yeah, last, yeah. as the last time okay yeah. so i need to share the entire screen can you see the screen now yeah yeah okay in case of software then we had these you know the software people who were um who were doing the main task but this main task was um, then there were project managers and the project manager said that you know the software people didn't like the project manager to take the entire context or entire theory entire recognition from them because all the work they felt that the work is done by the software people so um what what these people did was they go they went ahead and they said why do we do why do we need project ma managers why do we need something called um, a plan because making a plan would require somewhere around um 3 months 4 months and so on so why do i spend so much of time making just a plan when i can actually develop things i can make a website i can make an application why do i need to write something in the word document which i don't like anyways so they went ahead and they created something called um 
agile manifesto so if you go to agile manifesto.org you're gonna see the entire theme of what these uh, developers said they said we would want to ensure that uh, the working software should be favored than writing a word document we should respond to change then we we kept on saying you know uh, do a CR or change request. We can change. It is simple for us, for software people, control Z and we are good. It's not like that, you know, I don't like the building, so the building has to be scrapped. It's it's a document, it's a code. I can do control Z and I should be good. Um, and why do I need a project manager to give us uh, directions when I know what I can do? So the um, Agile or Scrum, one of the main arm of Agile, that got started and in this so i'm going to be talking about scrum so there's an example you might want to read the example and think about you know how do we go about product thinking um, how do how do agile people or agile thought process provide value um, to the development cycle um, so i'm just gonna skip that and then i would just gonna go ahead and talk about the roles in agile so there are three roles predominantly in agile um, the first role is product owner the second role is the team and the third role is um, remember we used to have a project manager the scrum master they changed it and they called it scrum master so let's talk about the scrum master first or the project manager first so this set of smart people who were developing the software, they said, we don't want somebody to give us the directions to do work. So we need uh, somebody who would help us uh, get the work done, who's going to be enabler for us, who's going to coach us. So there's this concept called servant leadership. The concept came up and um, so servant leadership. So an agile uh, project manager, if the designation is same or the designation scrum master, we want this guy to help us. He should not be telling us as to what needs to be done. We are self-sufficient, um, good set of individual who knows what needs to be done. We just want in case we are not getting, let's say, a war room, we're not getting a space to sit this guy who's our so-called project manager should help us to get those war rooms to um, manage the meetings with the uh, contractors to work with the customer to facilitate the meeting and so on so there has to be this guy uh, who's a facilitator and not a manager so that uh, role came up the other role is a uh, development team the development team are the, the team itself, the agile team. And they said, you know, there, there is a formula, Scrum team. So I'm specifically talking about Scrum methodology. They said, we don't want a lot of people to be part of the team. We want to develop faster and we want to develop, uh, you know, efficiently. So we want a team which is T-shaped set of people. What is T-shaped? So have you heard I-shaped skill set? Anybody? I is, uh, you know, the one which is specialist. People who are only doing, uh, let's say, database. Earlier, we, we wanted database guys. We wanted Oracle database specialist, the people who would uh, manage the databases. But then if I'm an agile team, we are only seven plus or minus two people, okay? So we want, and the uh, development life cycle is somewhere around two to four weeks. So if one person fell sick, I want other people to be taking care of the work. Um, so I would want, rather than I shaped, I want people to know everything of the other skills. For example, a person in my team should know development. He or she should know coding. He or she should know how to write test cases and some bit of database uh, writing triggers and making, uh, you know, developing the uh, algorithm in the database as well. 
so t shaped is people who are generic so that they can uh, they can take over as and when required so my team should be generic or it should be t shaped people also i would want my team to be co located it's a good idea if the team is co located because then they can communicate faster things can be done easier and if not co located there has to be a common time frame for people to work um there has to be something called fish ball window so let's say if me and you are in different time zone we should come at some point of time together on the computer or zoom meeting and keep our windows open so that if i have any question i can directly talk i don't have a call a person you are there in front of me with video on and you are working i'm also working and i can ask question exactly like the way we can ask question in the normal physical environment and they should be fully committed what is fully committed 100% allocated to the team so that they work towards the project objective i might do something called paired programming wherein two people work together and uh, you know one person write the code the other observe and then after some point of time other person writes and the other observe the only reason for this is in case one falls sick or there is some problem the other can take over at any point of time and you also collaborate at this point of time um you should have a specific team space war room as i said there has to be some place where team can meet discuss the issues risk daily meetings and so on um so we as i said so there was another role called team member and the last role is product owner so agile want um their their customers to be more proactive they should reach out to the customer and talk and gather more requirements and collaborate with them uh with the changing scenario the projects are changing into something called products as well so what is a product a product is windows is a product um excel is a product zoom on which we are doing this meeting is a product um so there has to be somebody who takes this ownership that whatever software we are providing whatever work whatever deliverable we are providing this guy is the owner of that so um he also would work if we are working with the customer get the requirement from uh, the customers if it is a you know a captive organization like zoom then he or she should be able to get inputs from the market as to what are the features which are required in the next cycle next release cycle of zoom he or she also should be able to get a do market analysis competitor analysis there would be defects or bugs there would be uh, regulations from government so he or she should be able to get uh, understand all of that and create something called product backlog what is backlog the work which is yet to be done okay the work which my team is supposed to do i am yet to release these features these defects and these regulations um so he will, he or she going to keep a list of features um or the um, you know requirement which are yet to be developed those list of features are called product backlog any questions so there are three roles which we have looked at product owner team and the third one is you can speak if you want to uh, scrum master very nice so um let's do these questions i'll just give you question number first and second and see what is the role so let's look at question number 1 and you can type the role in your chat window So what is the sense you're getting here is responsible for working within a timeline um he's doer he's working 
he attends daily team meetings to work with his peers. Who are his peers? Team members. Um, he is expected to call for help in case of issues beyond his control. Yes, Webber, you have something to say? Okay, a lot of noise from Webber. So I've muted you, Webber. So this guy is a team member, right? Not scr Scrum Master going to be helping others. Okay, he's he won't call for help. He would be helping others. Got it? Let's look at the second one. Who is the second one? Ria. Who is Ria? Can you identify the role of Ria? Ria is a scrum master, very nice. She ensures that if the team is facing some blocker, she works with management to handle them. That is the work, you know, servant leadership. That's the work of a scrum master. Okay, and then so on. So you can do that in your, um, you know, your spare time. Let's talk about a concept of time box. What is time box? Time boxes agreed upon time to finish development and release the deliverables. Now, if, if I look at predictive way of planning, my customer gives me a lot of requirement. Based on the requirement, I plan for how much time it's gonna take, right? And how much cost it's gonna take. So I estimate for time and cost. But in case of Agile, I have a concept of time box, which means I say this is the duration in which I need to take out or create a deliverable, which I can show to the customer. And this deliverable would be, um, you know, this iteration should have something which customer can see. So in case of Agile, what I'll do is I estimate for how much scope can I, how much work. So scope or features is something which I estimate for. Here, the scope is fixed. Okay, what is fixed? The work. And I estimate for time and cost. Here, what is fixed? In, a, in case of Agile, the time is fixed. The time is the duration, which I said, you know, I'm gonna be showing something within two weeks of time box. And I keep on changing. What is that which I'm gonna to show to the customer or to my management? These two or three stories are few things which my team of eight members can do within this two weeks of time frame. So time box is a concept. We choose the time box. The first thing which I do when I go with agile methodology is, we select how much duration do I need to release any, uh, you know, deliverable. So my team decides, and generally it comes from the management uh, PMO. PMO says, you know, we're gonna have two weeks of time box. So we decide, okay, two weeks, my team is fixed. So cost in, in general is fixed. What I would estimate for is how much work can I deliver within those two weeks? So instead of thinking, what is the work and how much time it's gonna take for me to deliver, which could be years. Here I'm saying no, uh, in case of Agile, I'm gonna deliver something within those two weeks. So that's slightly change in the way of thinking in case of Agile. So time box is a very important concept which you guys should be aware of. Questions here? Okay, so uh, I will. So there are prioritization methods as to what feature should go in or what is the work which my team should do. Um, and uh, you, all of you guys know the prioritization method called Moscow, nice to have or must have whenever customer gives us a lot of requirement 
I would definitely want my customer to give me at least some demarcation of which requirements are must requirements and which requirements are uh, can be done later or nice to have. So you can go ahead and get these requirements prioritization by many other methods. So one, one is Moscow for sure, which you guys know. We can get our requirements into four categories. Must is mandatory, must have. Should is, you know, second uh, best priority. Could is the third preferred, but not necessary. And won't is, you know, let's not think about this requirement. It's like, we may want to have it in later releases of the cycle. So you can use Moscow. We can also use something called Kano. Um, there's other uh, methods like paired comparison. One of the good method which you may want to use is 100 point method. And this is very interesting. What we do here is um, if there are, let's say you are a set of four um, representative from different department and there is a workshop happening as to which requirement should go live first. So I, as a facilitator, can give you 100 points. I can give, you know, person one 100 points, IT manager another 100 points, and business side 100 points, 100 rupees if you, or $100, whatever, whatever currency you work with. These are the features, and I ask them, where would you want to spend your $100 or 100 rupees? So write it down. So this guy may say, you know, I want to spend $100 on feature one and zeros on others if he's very, uh, you know, tuned into only one feature. The rest of the other people can say, okay, I want to spend 25 here and so on. So at the end, you're going to get some kind of numbers here. So the, the feature which, get, which gets maximum number of money or points that is the one which is sure shot win. You need to do that or you develop that feature. So you can use 100 point method, it's fun. And people, you, you generally get, you know, people view onto various features and you get a priority list of the features. Similarly, we can also use another method which is exactly the same sort of feature or method called dot voting. Dot voting is, you know, instead of giving money, we give dots to people. We we give, in, in case there are four features, I would give them two dots or three dots, less number of dots than the features. And I ask people, where do you want to spend your dots? So one person going to come and say, oh, I want to have this dot here. Another person going to say here. You might want to give them different color dot just to see what are their preferences a same color is also fine. The one which gets many dot, that is the uh, feature which you need to go with. So you get a prioritized list of um, features. Um, these are the ones which are the questions to practice on the dots. What is product backlog? I spoke about this particular thing earlier in our discussion. So in case somebody can speak on that or can type on the chat window. Who owns the product backlog? What is it? A product backlog is owned by product owner. Very nice. And what does it has? What are the content it, ha it would have? It, it, it will be having the uh, content of different features yet to be done, yet to be executed. Very nice. So it would have, uh, you know, feature, feature lists which are yet to be developed. Um, so features, but it would also have, as I told you earlier, it can have defects. Um, it can have regulation requirement and so on. So it would have a lot of, uh, you know, line items. So instead of calling these line items as features yet to be developed, because there could be defects which are yet to be. For example, in Mac, Zoom is crashing all the time in the newer version. So that's a feature which is, that's a defect which has to be critically closed um, and it has higher priority. So it would come on top 
so that the development team can work on that particular defect and close it in the next iteration. So instead of calling them the feature list, we call them something called PBIs. Product, each item would be called PBI, product backlog item. Okay. Kavita, I have one question here. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, is it possible one product owner is owner of multiple products? Yes, possible. No? Yes. Possible? Yes. Okay, then uh, it is very challenging, right? Uh, for one product owner, uh, let's take uh, example, organization has given him some uh, four products. The handling four products, uh, getting a different uh, requirements from different supplier and uh, it is challenging yeah, right it would be challenging for him but you don't want to be in a different role wherein one product backlog is owned by two product owners that's not possible you would have one owner of a product backlog if this guy has bandwidth and if these are related uh, product your organization do not have any other person they might want to say okay you handle it for some time so it may be possible that one person becomes the product owner for two products temporarily. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay. There's something called product backlog grooming. Um, what is product backlog grooming? Um, product owner, as I told you earlier, would have the PBI items which are listed, but which item has high value? This item needs to go up so that he or she can discuss with the development team that this particular item needs to be developed. So, um, you know, so there is an exercise which product owner does with stakeholders. Um, and it could be development team as well, wherein they sit and discuss the priority of that item and move the item, the one which has higher priority on top and the one which is vague and high level to the bottom. The exercise wherein the you know higher priority item gets moved to the top and the others move to the bottom, that meeting is called product backlog grooming meeting and that action is called product backlog grooming. The reason we want to have that is because I want my development team when they start off discussing which feature should go in the time current sprint or iteration. Uh, the, the initial items which are there in the product backlog, they should be clear enough for my team to estimate. I should not have, you know, oh, I think I should be, this particular feature is like, like that. Or it's a very high level feature. So because my team is developing something within two weeks, I want my team to give them something concrete, clear, small. And that's where we reach to something called definition of ready. So my development items, so my PBI items should be clear enough, should be good enough. So one of the criteria to see whether my PBI items are ready to be developed or ready to be discussed in the sprint planning meeting or not is I would look at as a product owner, I would look at each item and see whether this item is independent, somebody can do it or not. Is it valuable? Does it bring value to if I develop it? Is it estimatable? Can my team estimate it? Is it small? Is it testable? So, um, just remember invest as the criteria and in the PMP exam you might have question on, on to you know um, on this particular concept. The sprint also has something called um, sprint events. So let me talk about events within the sprint. Okay. Are there any questions before I move to the events part of things? Okay. There are, there are four events basically. Um, the events are sprint planning events, 
So we, we spoke about roles. What are different roles? We had product owner, we have development team, and we had who? Scrum master, right? Now we had four, we have in Scrum four events. We have an event to plan what goes in the sprint. This is called sprint planning event. Once the team decide that these are the features I'm gonna develop, these features are listed into something called sprint backlog. You know product backlog. What is product backlog? Who's the owner of product backlog? Product owner. The sprint backlog is subset of those features, the features which are listed in the product backlog and the team says, okay, out of these 10 features, I'm gonna develop these two features in the next two weeks of time box. So the sprint backlog would have those two features listed here. And who would be the owner of sprint backlog? Logically. Uh, Scrum Master? No. Scrum Master does not have any authority in Scrum. Okay. He's just okay. enabler. Uh, okay. The entire Scrum team is responsible Very for nice. Sprint. Yes. So the entire okay. Scrum team is going to be responsible for the Sprint backlog. So the owner is the development team, the team itself. Um, where we discuss, you know, what goes in the sprint is the meeting called sprint planning meeting. Once we discuss that this is what I'm going to develop, which is in the sprint backlog, we as a development team member meet daily for 15 minutes. We discuss what did we do yesterday? What is the plan for today? What are the issues and risks? And that's it. We discuss the status and update our status. So that we do every day for 15 minutes. Uh, towards the end of the sprint or iteration, it's desirable. It is, oh, it is not desire. It is required that you should have something called the, the work which you have, which you were supposed to do. That work would be called shippable product. So that product, if it is a website, then you should have those features updatable on the website. They should be shippable, meaning it, you are ready to go to the production. I should be able to ship them to my customer. If it is a document, it's a good document which is ready to be released. So um, after those time box time, I should be able to release these. So the deliverable should be ready. So I would have, so there are three artifacts before I move to events. Let's talk about artifacts. We have product backlog as one of the artifacts. You guys know it now. Then we have another artifact called sprint backlog. You guys know it now. And other third artifact is shippable product. Um, so three artifacts are the main um, you know, artifact of Scrum. We guys know all of them right now. Events, we discussed events in Scrum. Sprint planning is a discussion wherein product owner comes up along with development team and Scrum master. We discuss what is that which I can put in as in the upcoming sprint and we decide on the sprint backlog. These are the set of PBI items which I would be developing. We meet for 15 minutes daily meeting to discuss the update and uh, do a status update on the, you know, on the tool or in a war room. We discuss and update the um, status of the work. After two weeks, or after the iteration get over, there is another event which happened called sprint review. What should be the objective of sprint review as the name suggests, any idea? People? Mm -hmm. uh, completion of backlog. Yes, so remember in every, whatever we do, it has to be reviewed by your customer. Customer does acceptance testing, right? 
So here we have done development and testing ourselves. So the deliverable which I have come out is shippable. That means it is tested deliverable. So this deliverable now needs the eyes of the customer. Who's our customer? Product owner here. So the product owner comes, he's invited in the sprint review and he or she checks the deliverable, whether it suffices, whether the features were incorporated the way he or she wants, or um, if it is not, then there are other set of requirements which comes up uh, that, you know, this is this feature has to be done in this way and so on. And these list of requirements uh, which are new or the ideas which comes up while looking at the, uh, the shippable product or the deliverable which team has made, um, where would these new requirements should go in the next sprint by default or where? So there would be certain ideas which team is going to come out with, right? So these ideas which comes out or defects which comes up, what is logical sense? Where should I put these ideas or new set of requirements? Do I reject them saying, let's not do it. Let's do whatever is there in the product backlog. What, what should we do? It will go back to the PBI. It will go back to product backlog. It will be yeah. added here. And yes. based on, then there's going to be an exercise of grooming. So in case this requirement was, you know, very valuable, then it would come up based on the grooming and then would be picked up in the next iteration. If it is not, then it would stay wherever the value of that requirement would be. So um, any new requirement, any defects are gonna get added in the product backlog at this point of time. The idea of sprint review is acceptance testing. The product owner checks your deliverable. So, um, so that's an event which happens. And the last event of Scrum uh, methodology is Sprint retrospective. Any idea? We do retrospective in the normal project life cycle as well. What is the idea of re retrospective? What do we do here? In uh, retrospective, we'll validate the uh, sprint along with all the Scrum team members, like what went well, what uh, not went well, and what is the feedback. Overall, uh, we, nice. we do not, so I'm going to change the word, not validate. We look at the process. Uh, yeah. The deliverable is validated here in the sprint review. Here we check for the process aspect. We sit with our team and see uh, and talk and discuss what did we do good? What was good? Which process was good, which we worked on? Which tool was good? Uh, what behavior was acceptable, which, which was not good, what could have been better, what is the expectation in case somebody really did, you know, um, out of the team sort of behavior. So we may point that out. And um, in case there are some best practices, we list them down and we put them for we, we mark it for the usage in the, you know, that's the way we get matured as the scrum team. Uh, if there's something which we should not be doing, we probably would have some kind of process or team charter saying that if somebody does that, we'll have fines for that kind of behavior or whatever. So a sprint retrospective is basically to look at ourselves and make us much better as a better team. Okay. So these are the four events. We have sprint planning, we have daily meetings. Um, sprint planning is at the start, before the start of the sprint, daily meeting every day. Uh, sprint review, the moment sprint gets over, the review gonna happen, the idea is acceptance or looking at checking the deliverable and retrospective is within the team to become more mature as the team itself. Okay. There are some guidelines as to how many hours uh, the team the ta the team should team meeting should last and what is the objective of the meeting. Okay. So let's look at the first one. I'll give you 
two, three minutes and do a matching with the, you know, the first one is which event. So write down the one is three or one is two and so on. So this is one, two, three here. And let me write numbers here. This is A, this is B, C and D. So I'll give you some time to discuss that and think through it. So the first one is which one? Time box event done at the start. So look at the keyword to select the sprint backlog. So which one is this? This is sprint planning event. The second one, development team meets daily. So you've got a keyword called daily, discuss progress, issues, update. So this is the daily scrum meeting. So look at the keywords as well. The Scrum team invites stakeholders to discuss and show sprint deliverable. A uh, product owner may release any completed functionality if they feel so. So which one is this? The, where the product owner does the review. So sprint review during a, a sprint retrospective. <laughs> this also gives the answer within itself. So this is the retrospective. Okay, so you've got the answers here. And move forward. There is a concept of team velocity. Anybody I have any idea what is velocity? So velocity has to do with how much work a team can do, how much work or effort a team can do in um, in that time box. We have not gone through the story point section, which was here earlier. So you won't be able to give the answer of these, the velocity concept. I'm sorry, we don't have much time. So um, please go through that and understand the concept of velocity. Artifact, I told you about three artifact, product backlog, sprint and increment or shippable product. The last concept is definition of done. Whenever a programmer and you have these programmers anyway, you know, my team had it. I myself was a programmer. So whenever my boss used to ask me, is this done? So if I'm the programmer, I would say, yeah, yeah, the code is ready and can be deployed. But are the comments in the code done? Are the name, naming convention followed while I'm writing the code? Have you written the test cases? So for everybody uh, in your team, definition of done, is different. So you may want to arrive at a good definition of done, which means if I say, yes, this piece of work is done, it means I have written the code, unit testing, test cases are written, the results are published, um, test uh, integration test, if there are any, have been done. If there is a manual someplace, I need to write documentation that is also updated and so on. So it's a good idea when we talk about coders or developer, or even if we're talking about uh, advertising business, which also can use agile methodology. When somebody says, yes, I've done my work, 
done meaning these are the few things uh, so you might want to have a checklist of done done um, so have a definition of done meaning completed work when do i use definition of done before the code is released before the deliverable is released so my team should be able to apply the definition of done here before before i release the deliverable okay that's pretty much it for today read the agile principles as well if you go to agile manifesto.org you would be able to read the agile principles there are 12 principles just go through them they are very easy um, read them up and understand them it's it's easy to just understand you might get certain questions on the uh, not exactly as to what is the agile manifesto number 10 but some uh, bits and pieces pieces like you know what is what is the whole thought process of agile development so simplicity there are four event three artifacts etc those kind of stuff that's pretty much it and then there are uh, you know module end questions which are typically like pmp exam and helps you understand the agile way of working any question in uh, the discussion which we did today Yes, people. How are you guys feeling comfortable? No, yes. Anything is fine. Any feedback? Yeah, you, you have covered a lot of things actually. Okay. Um, I have one question, uh, Kavita. Yeah. With respect to uh, Agile uh, perspective, uh, how much the question set will come in the PMP? It is uh, some ratio it is there or how it is? So Parnabe is with us and she can answer. She has faced the PMP questions. I mean, PMP exam, passed the exam. So she would be in a better position to answer the question. Parnabe, how many percentage of questions were agile or something like that? Most of the questions, I think 90% of the questions were agile based scenarios. Whatever topic it is, risk management or uh, people management, whatever, the scenario will be agile based. So agile, agile or normally, be, you know, in this scenario, it is written hybrid project or agile project. Yeah, That's correct. How the in a hybrid is. project, this happened and then the question follows on an agile project like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you, Panel. So uh, I think uh, Pimbok uh, sixth edition uh, it is still uh, applicable or is there seventh edition is there? So let me give that answer. There are there are two editions, which is Pimbok six and Pimbok seven, but nothing is applicable. What you need to do is there is something called PMI Eco. If you search for Project uh, Eco PMP Eco examination content outline you're going to find what is the um, you know topics you would be assessed on so uh, the topics going to come from pm box 6 or pm box 7 so typically pmi has made their own curriculum and enabled the people like us like atp who should be able to create and deliver those content to people so it's not like you need to only refer PM Box 7 or PM Box 6. It is a lot of documents. Okay. So there is a yeah, there is a content team which with PMI who has given that content to uh, PMI ATPs. ATPs are education providers with authorized training partners with PMI. Yeah, thank you, Kaita. So thank you all for joining me. If there are any questions, we have one or two more minutes if you want to ask, else I'm gonna say bye-bye to all of you. You can check this recording at YouTube. I'm gonna be publishing that pretty soon by tomorrow and of today. This PPT can you share us? This is not a PPT, this is the book. So oh. um, if you want to have this book, you can go ahead and buy the book called past PMP in 21 days study guide.
that's available okay. at Amazon. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you all. And I'll talk to you soon again next week. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Pandabi. Thank you. Yeah, Thank bye bye. You. Thank you. Bye.